Hi, I'm Rachel Seitz. I'm the Landowner Outreach and Stewardship Manager for the Hill Country Alliance. And I'm Gabby Tamez with Texas Parks and Wildlife Inland Fisheries. We brought you out here today to the beautiful Blanco River to talk about a simple and widely used land stewardship practice called grow zones. These can be implemented along creeks, streams, or riversides, otherwise known as a riparian area. So in this video, we'll talk about what a grow zone is and the benefits that they can bring to a property. And we'll also look at some examples of grow zones in the area. And we'll talk about how you can bring a grow zone to your own property. So Rachel, what is a grow zone? Glad you asked. Let's go check one out. Yeah. So a grow zone is essentially a designated area by a creek, a river, or a stream where stressors like foot traffic, grazing, or mowing are restricted in order to enable the native plants and wildlife to thrive. This is a super easy and inexpensive practice. Oftentimes, landowners or land managers will simply stop mowing an area that they didn't often use or access much to begin with. And of course, if you wanna invest more or add more, that's perfectly fine. Cultivating a grow zone on your property is a fantastic way to enhance both the beauty and the health of your land. And a grow zone can bring a lot of benefits to your property, among which are increased riverbank stability, which can often help with damage that's caused by erosion. They also help enhance native wildlife habitat. They increase water quality by filtering runoff. And of course, they bring gorgeous native scenery to your own lawn. The plants that grow in a grow zone, they produce deep, strong roots. And these roots act kind of like a sponge that can retain moisture and slow and sink water into the land. And this process essentially allows, allows the area to become more resilient to both droughts and floods, unlike maybe your typical manicured lawn. So Rachel and I are at a fantastic demonstration site right now. As you can see, this landowner has cultivated her own grow zone by simply restricting mowing to certain designated areas. Grow zones can be easy and expensive. They can be as large or small as you'd like, and they are definitely flexible to your needs. They only require that you change your mowing habits. Optimal grow zones stretch 30 feet from the water's edge, but even five to 10 feet can provide a degree of benefit. To start, mark off your designated grow zone area. This can be with flags, posts, or materials from your property like rocks and fallen logs. These will serve as a reminder to not mow or travel through the area in order to allow native plants to establish. If you're grazing livestock, you'll want to fence them out. You can also help jumpstart the restoration process by broadcasting native seeds or transplanting riparian species into your grow zone. Once a stressor like mowing or grazing has stopped, plant growth can happen pretty quickly. Creating a grow zone does not mean losing recreational access to your river. Landowners can keep their favorite spots open for fishing, swimming, and other recreational purposes while enhancing the natural beauty and function of their landscape. So these landowners started putting in grow zones after a scour event from the 2015 flood on the Blanco River. As you can see, it's a perfect example of a restored riparian landscape. And we've got some pictures to show you of the land right after this horrible flood. The property was able to bounce back quickly by using strategic grow zones where they restricted foot traffic and mowing, broadcast native seeds, and transplanted natives. This property is an active bed and breakfast and a great example of recreation and restoration happening at the same time. A lot of guests at this B&B have commented on how much they enjoy the privacy, wildlife viewing, and beautiful scenery that their grow zones create. Here's another example of an applied grow zone. This area is used as a recreational facility for the local university. They've adjusted their lawn care to create open areas for recreational activities. Here you can see their access points where people can enter the river. And here's their grow zone where some gorgeous native plants have established. One last and great example of a grow zone is this property here. As you can see, this is super achievable. 
They've allowed a lot of land up from the river to grow wild and have started mowing wide walking ways through their grow zones, as opposed to mowing the entire property. This is a way that you can incorporate grow zones by reducing your maintenance. As you can see, here's an access point to the river. When we talked with the owner, she said that grow zones are a different mindset and her way of connecting with the land and making an impact with small acreage. She set up grow zones after the property had major damage from a flood and her and her family have benefited from having this natural beauty and in turn the local ecosystem benefits too. As we mentioned, grow zones are a fantastic way to enhance the health and beauty of your property with minimal effort and resources. In this video, we've covered what a grow zone is, how to get started, what they can look like, and how they can benefit your property. If you have any questions or need assistance getting a grow zone set up on your own property, please feel free to reach out to Gabby or myself. We've left our contact information in the comments below. And also feel free to share this video with any friends, family, or neighbors. Thank you so much for watching and happy land stewardship.